was in the audience at the PlayStation press conference in 2015 when the Final Fantasy VII Remake was officially announced. And I don't mind telling you, dear viewer, that I went absolutely bananas. Final Fantasy VII is pretty much my favourite game of all time and I've been hoping for a full-scale remake for, well, pretty much forever. But after the excitement of that initial announcement wore off, cold, boring reality set in. What an undertaking this remake would be! Were we likely to see it at any point this decade? Things looked especially uncertain after Square Enix essentially went totally dark on remake news after that first confirmation of its existence. But then, amazingly, last week at E3 we got tons of gameplay, we got cutscenes, we got combat breakdowns, we got a proper look at my girl Tifa, and we got a release date. For the first part of the remake at least, which is going to be episodic owing to its tremendous scope and scale. And although I wasn't able to go hands-on myself, that was handled brilliantly by Johnny, who I am now pleased to say is an FF7 convert, I've been reading up and watching all the newly released info very carefully. And it's all looking extremely positive. I honestly cannot wait for March 2020 now. That said, there are a few details that, as an FF7 super fan, I can't help but wonder about. Let me break them down and wonder with me why not. Here are five questions I still have about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Let's mosey. We've learned that the Final Fantasy VII Remake, releasing in March 2020, is a full-size game in its own right, encompassing two Blu-ray discs worth of content. But it isn't Final Fantasy VII in its entirety. Instead, it recounts all of the events in the original game that take place in Midgar. Presumably, this is up to and including the party's epic escape from Shinra HQ, one of my favourite cutscenes from the original game, and their subsequent highway battle with the Transformer-like Motorball. Maybe we'll get our first glimpse of the world outside the rotting pizza and even see the party make it all the way to calm. But even if we don't, it's easy to forget just how many events actually take place in Midgar in the original. You've obviously got the bombing missions and the boss fight with the guard scorpion, which we've already seen and which looks incredible, but footage from the new trailers also confirm the inclusion of Airbuster and Apps, the monster found in the sewers directly underneath Don Corneo's mansion. And actually, all of the enemies and bosses we've seen so far have stayed remarkably close to their original designs, including guard hounds, custom sweepers, and sahajins. This, as much as anything else we've seen so far of the remake, makes me super excited to see what else is coming as it shows the attention to detail being put in by the development team, as well as an understanding that it's not just the big boss fights fans are looking forward to seeing recreated, but literally every little encounter of the original. And the enemy reimagined have looked absolutely spot on so far, so I can't wait to see how the remake plans to show off its more fantastical enemies like the Midgar Zolum, Genova, and of course, the weapons. But the internals can be overloaded. Lightning magic. <laughs> no other option, huh? thing we've been wondering about since the gameplay's introduction at E3 is how summons will work in relation to the world and to the revamped combat. My hope is that they won't work like they did in Final Fantasy XV. As incredible as the Astrals were, it was sort of a shame that you could only initiate summons when certain conditions were met. And even then, it was all at least partially randomised. Admittedly, this sort of made sense though, as the summons really did need certain conditions to be the size and scale that they were, in particular with regards to Titan and Leviathan. There are no summons in the early Midgar portion of the original game, with the first summon materia players receive being Choco Mog at the Chocobo farm in the grasslands outside of Midgar, so it's unlikely we'll see any huge summons in this first chapter of the remake. There are summons available as DLC in the collector's edition of the game though, but it's worth noting that these particular summons, Cactuar, Carbuncle and Chocobo Chick, 
are not only, presumably, all small in size, they're summons that never actually appeared in the original game. This is good news, really, as it points to the fact that they're optional extras that won't greatly affect the way the game is played. But their very inclusion is interesting. Does that mean that the only way players can summon in this first remake game is through DLC? Or does it mean that other summons will appear earlier than expected? And if they do, will they be similarly smaller in size? It's tough to picture any of the grander scale summons fitting comfortably in Midgar slums, but I guess only time will tell. A little aside here that's not really anything to do with anything, but I really like the fact that you can see Cloud's Materia equipped in his Buster Sword in the released gameplay, even if Materia is a lot bigger than I pictured it being. I wonder will all weapons and armor in the remake have visible Materia slots? That's going to look pretty epic later in the game. Arlene. Now, it seems like overall, the remake is sticking pretty close to the original story beats. It's very early days, of course, but given that the remake coming out in March is dedicating a significant amount of time to what is, after all, just a portion of the original, it feels like the developers are working hard to hit every single bit of story and side content that means so much to original fans. We've seen plenty of action because it's important to show the exciting stuff in trailers and at conventions, but I hope we get those quieter moments too, as well as the comedic portions that really let players get to know the party members as people. I'm thinking about the time spent in Aerith's house, the conversations the team have in the prison cells, the wall market, and of course, Don Corneo's mansion. I hope we get to wander around and chat to the citizens of Midgar and take in all those little nooks and crannies that made the original feel lived in and alive. One way in which the remake differs greatly from the original, however, is that the trailer seems to show Cloud having a vision of Sephiroth after the early bombing missions. This sets up this particular conflict way earlier than in the original game, which kind of makes sense given that the alternative is having pretty much no appearance of Sephiroth in this first episode at all. But I hope that it doesn't somehow spoil Sephiroth's menace by making him too present or pantomime villainy. The more mysterious and aloof Sephiroth remains in those early stages, the more of a chance the game has to build up his legendary, almost godlike status. It's blink and you miss it, but one of Final Fantasy VII's minor antagonists gets a major glow up in the new extended trailer. Not President Shinra, but Heidegger. Heidegger is Shinra's head of public safety. A pretty ironic job title for him, really, all things considered. But in the original, he's notable for his short temper and his ridiculously evil laugh, which it seems is an occupational requirement of all Shinra higher ups. He's been reimagined for the remake and honestly looks pretty amazing. After that quick glimpse of possibly one of the game's more forgettable baddies, except maybe Palmer, we genuinely can't wait to see how Reeve, Scarlet, Hojo, and of course, everyone's favorite Turks, Rude, Reno, and Elena look. Was I the only one who crushed on literally all of the Turks back in the day, by the way? <laughs> question I have left for the remake is, how long do we have to wait for the rest of it? The FF7 remake's producer, Yoshinori Kitaze, has said that they hope the next installment won't take as long as this episode that's set in Midgar. A lot of that is possibly owing to the fact that gameplay systems and character models and various other assets are already made and in place. But even so, there's a huge amount of content still to go, and the more we see, the more I want to play. I also hope that the remake's episodic nature doesn't mean the game will constantly be broken up into different areas. Will there be an episodic installment where we can travel the world in the high wind and or a gold chocobo? I certainly hope so. But how will this work? Will we be buying multiple full-priced games or will it come as additional downloadable content? I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but for now, I'm very much looking forward to catching up with Cloud, Tifa, Barret, Aerith and eventually <gasps> even Red 13 in Midgar. What are you most excited about seeing? 
Let me know in the comments and subscribe to Eurogamer for lots more Final Fantasy VII Remake content in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching. Bye!